And this episode of the Locked On NBA Big Board Podcast, it is part two with me and my brother James Sharp thoughts on some of the top French prospects that we believe could be selected in the 2024 NBA draft. In the last episode, we talked about Alex R, Melvin Ajinka, and Pacone Diadet. We just Nadia. call him P- Dadia. We call him PD. Now, in this episode, we're going to talk about Zachary Reese, one of the more divisive prospects in this class. Also, we're going to talk about T. John Salon, who I think could be the biggest winner in the 2024 NBA draft based off of his play this season. And then also Zachary Piran, a guy that has been very productive over the years, who I also believe has a chance to be selected in the 2024 NBA draft. Stay tuned to hear our thoughts on three more French prospects in part two of I don't know, I don't even have a title for this episode, but part two of the top French prospects in 2024. each and every person that has made the Locked On NBA Big Board Podcast your first listen of the day. I'm your host, Rafael Barlow. Got my brother, James Barlow, with me again. I mean, well, when it's me and my brother, it's we got chemistry, whether it's hooping. Even though we haven't played two-on-two in a while, we need, we need to get on that. To play hey, but if, if you guys in, in the draft Twitter world want to challenge me and my brother in a game of two-on-two, let's make it happen. But right now, we just... We, we just talking basketball. We're not really playing basketball. But this episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app. Create an account. Use the code Locked On NBA, and you can get twenty dollars off your first purchase. Once again, thank you for making the Locked On NBA Big Board Podcast your first listen of the day. Whether you're listening in the car, on the way to work, at the gym while you're working out, where you're listening where you're not supposed to be at work, or I'm sorry, while you're listening while you're not supposed to be listening, while you're supposed to be doing your job. But I appreciate each and every listen. Share, subscribe, comment. That's the best way we're going to grow this channel because basketball season is here. We got a lot of takes to get off. Not necessarily hot takes. We're not dudes out here just firing off hot takes to grow the channel, whatever. This is just exactly how we feel. And we shared our thoughts on three prospects in the last episode. And in this episode, I want to start off with Zachary Reese-Sher. Definitely one of the more divisive prospects in this draft class. I've seen someone have number one. Number one? Number one. I've seen a number one on, on, on a, a draft board. And it was like a pretty uh, respectable site in a sense. I've seen him mid first round. I've seen him late first round. I've seen him second round. And I have my personal opinions on Risa Share, which could be changing a little bit. But before I get into mine, I wanted to hear your thoughts on Zachary Risa Share. <clears throat> okay. Um, I think he's Corey Brewer, man. <laughs> what? <laughs> Hold on now. Listen to me. <laughs> Corey Brewer was a seventh pick in a draft. Okay. Had a 50-point game. He had a 50-point <laughs> game. Corey Brewer played 12 years in the NBA. Okay. Corey Brewer's best seasons were 12 points. Four rebounds, two assists, right? Okay. Corey Brewer, just stop me when I'm wrong. A slasher, not a shot creator for himself, right? Corner, great in transition. Mm-hmm. Does that sound like Zachary Reese shared to you? Again, nah. here's the thing, though. Look, I don't see. Again, we talked about the French, the French brothers, and shot creation isn't really their thing. I don't see shot creation. And I don't mean Corey Brewer is no bad thing. Like, again, he was yeah, a lot. If he has a 12-year career. If you have a 12-year career, you that's, a a great, that's a win. And, yeah. again, he was a seventh pick in the draft, right? He's won at every level, yeah. college and the NBA. Was he, he was on the Mavs team, right? Yeah, he was on that Mavs team. He okay. didn't. He was hurt, but he was on the Mavs team. Him and Cron Butler were hurt? I believe so, I yeah. Know, I know. Brewer didn't play in the finals. Okay. But, again, I just don't see... I see a first-round pick, but I see limited upside. He moves, I think it's filled for the game, but the ball in his hands is just not strong enough for me to have him go that high. And, again, everybody's opinion is, is their opinions. I respect your opinion. I'm just going by what I see. So, me saying Corey Brewer, I don't, I don't mean that as a negative. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? I'm just – that just, just goes by what I see. Now, again, we're, we're filming this today. It's what, Sunday the 8th? He got loose 
and had a 24-point game, right. right? But again, what did it look like? Right? I'm not a 24-point game as an 18-year-old, 19-year-old well, in the professional, professional league, setting yeah. is fantastic. But what did it look like? A couple wide open jump shots, mm -hmm. some slashing, right? Some cutting, right? In your mind, is that a top five pick when you're not creating for others? When you're not putting the ball on the ground? When you're not making plays? When you have to be spoon fed or force fed when you're playing off of somebody? I just don't buy that personally. Okay. Now, again, if you put him in the right situation and he's asked to play off of other guys, he's going to be fine. Again, Corey Brewer, right? He had some good years in Denver. He had some good years in Minnesota, right? He, he played for a championship team. They thought he was going to be a missing piece before he got hurt for those Mavs team. Now, again, you know, he played for a bunch of teams down the line, but he has a 50-point game. Yeah. You know, what, you know what I respect about you? I'm not saying this because you're my brother. Your comparisons aren't visual. Like, a lot of people will compare someone to another player because they look alike visually, right? So if a guy is dark skin with dreads, they'll compare him to another look, dark skin look, with I, dreads. I call those complexion comparisons. Yeah, you, that was... So I know somebody's listening to this, and they're going to be like, what? But if they looked alike, like physically, then I think some people would be like, oh, yeah, I can see the comparison. Look, but they don't look nothing alike, so that throws people off. So here's, here's what's going to work. Every white European player that can dribble and play pick and roll is going to be the next Austin Reeves going forward. In a American sense. player? It doesn't matter. White, just white player. White player who can dribble, put the ball on the ground, make plays for himself, that's going to be the comparison. That's just because, like, I think not, as yeah. humans, we that's just what we do. Yeah. Right? But, again, that's just what I saw from uh, Risha Share. Again, I'm not saying I don't like him. I just don't like him to where we're talking about the number one pick or even the top five pick. Again, I know this draft is going gonna, is gonna to get wide. It's gonna, yeah, it's going to look – it's going to get spooky, as they would say. Like, we don't know where guys are going to go. Right. But it's just, again, from what I see, have seen from him. And then that's not just at the level that he's playing now mm -hmm. uh, for um, is it JLM. JL, JL Board. I, I'm Board. actually going to watch Risa share play later on this week. OK, I'm going to see him live. It'll be like my probably my third or fourth time seeing him live. And I'm just as confused on him as any prospect that I've evaluated in the last few years. Corey Brewer wasn't the name that came to mind. Actually, I didn't even have like a, a player comparison. He has what NBA teams are looking for as far as size, the, the potential to be like this shoot, pass, dribble wing. Dribble where? He, he dribbles a, a little bit when he's playing with like okay with well, his age group. Here's the thing: when I watched him in the under nineteen, he, he shot forty four percent for three did, in under to, nineteen. To his defense, they say he was battling an injury. He wasn't. Mm. He wasn't. I didn't, wasn't that's good. not what I saw though. Is what I'm saying. Yeah. I saw again. I saw spot up, get out in transition, slash, and finish. That's Corey Brewer to me. Right? Fair. And again, it's not okay. That there's there's levels to it. There's slash shoot threes that turns into Jalen Brown. Mm -hmm. He's not like that. So again, it's no disrespect. Hey man, if I'm wrong, I'm I'm glad to be wrong. It's okay. I'm not gonna tell him to delete the footage or anything like yeah. that. Like if I'm wrong, I'm wrong, man. I'll be wrong again. But I just don't see top of the draft from him. And that's fair. So my first time seeing him play. I don't know if it, if it was, you know what? I think the first time I saw him play <laughs> was on my wedding day. Okay. So I got married in Paris, and um, he was playing for Asville. And then Asville played Paris basket, so the game was in Paris. Now, I'm not, I didn't go to see him play. I went to see Victor, the Bayama play. When Victor was playing for Asville. And in France, they have what they call the Espars League. And it's like, basically, it's JV and varsity. The JV game, they start at like 5 o'clock, and the varsity game, they start at like 9. You get there early, then there's like a big window. They clear everybody out so they can charge people. You get into those games for free. So, Risa Chair was probably 15 years old, maybe, 16 years old. And 
They blew out. Asvel's U21 team blew out Paris Basket. When I watched that game, I saw, like, man, he was finishing the transition. I mean, he was getting buckets. And I even did a podcast. I think if you go back and listen, around November 2021, I did a podcast on Zachary Reese this year. That's how much I believed in his game at that time. Fast forward, 21-22 season, I was planning to spend the whole season in Europe just evaluating prospects for future drafts. Asvel, their Adidas Next Generation team was playing a tournament in Belgrade. So I'm looking at Risa Shell like, okay, this, this is the dude. Did not have a strong tournament. It's like he showed what everybody sees in him when his team was winning, when they were up by a significant mm. margin. But if it was a tight game or a close game, I didn't see much out of him. So there was the championship game where they, they won the championship game of this particular um, um, Adidas Next Generation phase in Belgrade. And I think he may have had 11 points, but it was like an unimpactful 11. And he may not even have 11, but there was no impact on the game. So then I've been following him, and I see the, the talent, like the wing and all that. I just never have seen him dominate a game. Now, this weekend, the, the game that he just had may have been the best game that I've seen him play up, back other than the game that he saw was like a blow game in under 21. Actually, you know what? I need to take a break because I can go on and on talking about Zachary Reese's share. When we return, I'm going to share more of my thoughts on Zachary Reese's share. Stay tuned. I want to talk to you about game time. Have you ever wanted to buy tickets and just had issues buying last minute tickets or you buy tickets and then right when you're about to pay, you got this crazy price where it jumps. Well with game time, they have last minute tickets, flash deals, zone deals, and they have it on the app where everything is all inclusive. It's easy to find and buy tickets for every kind of event in your area. It actually show you views from the venue and they have a low price guarantee event cancellation protection, and job loss protection. So even if you lose your job and you already bought the tickets, Game Time will help you get your money back. And they have deals on tickets right up to the very last minute. And even an hour before it starts, it is the best, the best place to find last minute tickets. I know a few months back I was in New York, wanted to go to a Yankees game while I was there for the draft, went to Game Time, got some tickets. And it's not only sports, it's comedy, theater. And all you have to do, Let's download the Game Time app. Create an account. Use the code LOCKEDONNBA. You can get $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account. Use the code LOCKEDONNBA and you get $20 off. Download the Game Time app. Last minute tickets. Lowest price guaranteed. All right, I left off talking about Zachary Reese this year. And my concern with him is. When you watch him play live, like he's a guy that you can be tricked. And I don't want to come out sounding negative, but you can be tricked if you go on Synergy and you just watch his games and you just watch his clips, you can see different things. But if you watch him live in a full game, you can see that there are times where he just doesn't have an impact on games. Now, I know that I mentioned that they say he was dealing with an injury this summer, but in... I want to say it was the U19. I don't know if it was the final game or a semi-final game. It was a game against Spain, which France and Spain, to me, are the biggest rivals as far as youth levels in basketball. I think they're always going to meet at in the championship rounds when they're representing their country. And obviously, they'll serve you in the mix. But he has zero points, five turnovers, and I think like he took one shot. I've heard he was hurt. But I've seen multiple games where the bigger the game, the bigger the moment, the less I see of him. So that is my concern. But here's where I struggle. Okay. Because I have a tendency to see a guy that has a certain talent, and I think, dang, he should be dominating. Especially in Europe, because I think sometimes there's a huge talent gap between the guys that are the NBA prospects 
and the ones that aren't. So I tend to say like, hey, if you're an NBA prospect, you're on draft boards, I want to see you dominate. I rarely see that with French players other than Victor, but it's easy for him to dominate his generation on the national team because he was just so much better than, than everyone else. But with Reese's share, I feel like he's more talented than a lot of the guys that he's playing against, but sometimes he plays down to the competition, which is why the way he played in first division when he had, what, 24 points? It's like, was it him being held back by this whole, you know, like everybody eats offense that you see with a lot of the French national teams or even like on some of the under-21 teams? Or does he have a different level of confidence playing with older guys? But then again, I'm concerned because I've also said that in bigger games, I don't see the best out of him. So it is totally, totally confusing. If you have him as a top five pick, I don't agree with you, but I, I guess I can see why you like him. If you think he's a second round pick, I totally get it. So in my notes, I put that he has a good combination of size, skill, and upside, even though you don't think he has much upside. He has NBA positional size. I think he's a capable ball handler. Not like super creative, but I think he's a capable ball handler. I think that he shows some flashes. You got to like dig through the vault and watch all of his clips. But I think he shows some flashes of creativity off the bounce. He had a couple plays in the Pro A game where he made like turnaround jumpers. I'm like, okay. I think he has some good passing instincts. I like the fact that he passes the ball ahead, which may not sound like a a major trait, but there are some guys that just don't pass the ball ahead in transition. I think there's promise as a shoot, dribble, and pass wing. I think defensively, he's active. I think he's more active on the defensive end than on the offensive end sometimes. And I do, like I said, I think there's potential as a shooter. Now, here are my concerns. He can shoot. Yeah, and I think that's why you can say at the very minimum, he, and I know you don't like 3 and D guys you talked about the last episode, but I think at the very minimum you can say 6'8", he may be even taller than that wing that can shoot, that has that is not just the guy that just stands in the corner and shoots. So here's my concern. Some games I feel like he lacks this competitive fire. Like I mentioned, there are times where I thought he's disappeared in big games, and I mentioned the 0.5 turnovers in 23 minutes in a, in a, a, a big matchup against Spain. I think while he can handle the ball a little, there are times where he does not look like a confident ball handler, and he picks up his dribble. And I put he picks up his dribble too often. One of my concerns is he shies away from contact, does not always embrace physicality. I think that he has promise as a passer, but his decision-making is a little off sometimes. But I think that comes with age. And the fact that he doesn't get to the foul line because he's not embracing physicality and not being aggressive and getting downhill. And I also think that he's a, a, a poor finisher at the rim. Now, some of that can be fixed with added strength. Some of that could be youth, because he still is pretty young. But those are my concerns. And I know y'all see you <laughs> moving around. If you're not, hey, look, if you're just listening, then you can't see it. But his body language is twisting and turning every time I said man, something. Look, it the just, floor is yours. It man. just sounds like people want him to be Ron Holland, man, and that's not him. You know what's crazy is he may have more natural skill than Ron Holland, yeah, but Ron, Ron has that, that dog man. He's 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 a dog. The mo- you never ever w- will watch a Ron Holland game and be like, I didn't see him do anything for five minutes. And you, and everything that you say, like the flashes, Ron shows those flashes. Ron is trying to bang on you. So again, we this is not the Ron Holland podcast, but it sounds like he's everything Ron Holland is not. And not in a good way. That's fair. If you were a team based off of what you've seen and your knowledge of 2024, this draft, is he a first round pick? I take him in the first round. Yeah, I'm not, again, the Corey Brewer is not slander mm-hmm. by any means, right? But I'm thinking 20s to 30s for that pick. So here's my concern he played at the, um, what's the, the, the the, the, the classic in Portland, I can't think of the name right now, 
um, you know, where they play at the Blazers yeah, Arena. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He I'm played at that. There. And I didn't see a strong performance out of him in that particular game. Can he play in the NBA, even in college basketball, at a high level every night? Now, again, the, the reason why he's so divisive to me is because maybe in my mind I want him to be one way. But maybe realistically he's already prepared for the role that he's going to play. So that sounds like in limited upside, right? The NBA. Well, I think the up, limited upside could just be more so just like mentality. That's fair. I just feel like I don't trust. I, I think his handle is weak. And he doesn't finish, and he's not. He's gonna. He's to me. He's always gonna be somebody that you're gonna have to get him the ball to create offense for. But you don't like three and D guys. I don't. Role, but at the but same there time, there has to be somebody. You no. Know, but at the same time, like it's not. It's not something that I would shoot for within the top ten picks in the draft. Right. Right. That's just not. But my even preference. well. But this draft is a weak draft, so you got to look at it like. Let's not say. Let's say it's a different. It's, it's, it's an open a weak draft because again, yeah. I like Sar a lot. If he's Lamarcus Aldridge, like that's you'll take that. Yep. You know, I don't know quite who Ron Holland is right now, but he can play. Mm -hmm. So it's like I don't. I don't want to call it weak. It's weak because last year we got however many. You know superstars potential superstars all stars yeah so relatively speaking even in this relatively speaking weak draft i still just don't see him as a top 10 guy and let me let me go back i, sh I should stop saying weak draft because a lot of people thought 2020 was a weak draft and that was what Lamelo, anthony edwards yeah maxi's probably gonna be an all-star Hall at some point halliburton halliburton exactly so I think that draft, a lot of people were... I'm not a fan of calling the draft weak before guys even step foot in it. I, I, I apologize. Let's, let's, call, let's call it week five years. Wide now. open draft. Yeah, it's a All wide right. open draft. When we return, I want to talk about T. John Salon, who I am absolutely a big fan of. Like I, I think that he is a terrific prospect that has some flaws, but I think they can easily be fixed. Stay tuned to hear our thoughts on TJ, T. John Stallon, who I think is going to be a first-round pick. I want to talk to you about Jace Medical, because with a Jace case, you can get five life-saving antibiotics just in case you have an emergency. And now to get a Jace case, all you have to do is fill out a form, and you can actually jump on a call with a board-certified physician. You can get ongoing care from physicians on any treatment-related questions, doctor created and doctor recommended. Do not be caught unprepared. The Jace handles everything from online evaluation to licensed pharmacy medication delivery and ongoing consultation and care. Everyone should be empowered to take care of themselves and their loved ones when the unexpected happens. That's why Jace Medical provides a Jace case with the five life-saving antibiotics for emergency use and they give you peace of mind so that you are not just hoping to have access to medication in an emergency. Jace Medical is simple. They handle everything from online evaluation to licensed pharmacy medication delivery and ongoing consultation and care. So do not get caught unprepared and you can get $20 off these life-saving antibiotics today at Jace Medical by using the code LOCKEDON at checkout. That is jacemedical.com, J-A-S-E, medical.com. All right, last segment, we went basically two segments talking about Zachary Reese's shit. Again, he's divisive. And there's going to be different opinions on, on Reese's share. But I, one of the things that I have to say is that the same opinions that I had about SAR, I had about Reese's share. And then seeing a change of scenery in SAR has, you know, made his stock increase, in my opinion. And maybe that's the same for Reese's share. So... Again, like I said, I could see if someone really likes him, and I could see if someone has really big concerns. But with T. John Salon is a guy that I don't have major concerns about. I saw him play at Basketball Without Borders All-Star Weekend in Salt Lake City. I thought he played well. My, my biggest concern with him was 
he just seemed raw. Like the shot selection was off. I mean, like he was, I mean, he didn't lack confidence, but I, I love the physical tools. I thought he played hard. I thought he was tough. And I was like, man, I like this dude. And then the way he's been playing this year, I'm like, he, he's a first round pick in 2024. I did not see that as early as February. I thought 2025 guy, got to keep on your radar. But now I think he's turned the corner. What are your thoughts on him? And I'll share my scouting report on him. I think you're higher on him than I am, though I still like him. Okay. Um, he's long, like arms for days, mm -hmm. right? Uh, mechanics look great on his jump shot. Um, you know, I think he's a stretch forward, but he can put the ball on the ground. Again, that's very important to me because, again, we're going to chase you off the line if you can shoot, mm -hmm. right? Um, and he's improved his handle from – uh, when I saw him play in the under 18s versus today, so and if you would have saw him before that, that's why the tra that's why I'm so high on him because the trajectory is yeah going so up. I can I can see the improvement. Um, my concerns though, he might have some Ben McLemore in him, man. The jump shot is pretty, but it doesn't go in as often as you think it should. <laughs> no disrespect to Ben McLemore. Hey, I, <laughs> hey man. I thought Ben McLemore was going to be Ray Allen. I, I didn't think Ray Allen, but when you when I watched ben him Gordon. at Kansas, that he came out of nowhere in a sense. He was making everything, and then they were running like that backdoor cut for him, and he was catching lobs. But then I, I remember asking him, the NBA players, like, why can't Ben McLemore stick? He was like, hey, man, that man got the worst hands I've ever seen. And then he told me, look at this clip. And this is not a Ben McLemore bash session. Man, but there's this clip. If you Google Kawhi Leonard and Ben McLemore, and I, I only knew this because the NBA player told me that his hands were weak. And he was saying, like, you could just take the ball out of his hands. So there's a clip. I don't, did I ever show it to you? You told me his story before. If you Google on YouTube, he's dribbling a ball, and Kawhi Leonard just snatches it out of his hand like you snatch the ball out of like someone you don't respect. And then there was just multiple plays where guys would just take the ball out of his hands, and he said he had weak hands. So then what made this even funnier, then I know I'm going on a tangent here, there was this clip of Ben McLemore wearing gloves, and he's catching the ball out of the shooting gun. <laughs> if you go on his Instagram page, you can find it where you got like on the shooting gun, you the shoot jug. the ball comes out. He, was catching the he has on gloves and he's catching it like wide receiver gloves. And that's when I knew like, hey, that's the reason why they say his hands are weak. So they were saying like he bobbles passes and he puts the ball on the oh, floor. Shoot. You can just take. So anyway. Oh, man, look, I just know Ben McLemore J is patient. Look. Well, they need to make it a 2K20. Maybe it's a Ben thing, because Ben Wallace is Jay Wilson. Jay Knight. Ben Wallace had the elbow the in. He flicked his wrist. He just uh, probably couldn't feel his fingertips. <laughs> and that's probably why it was bad. Nah. But ben, all right, we're on the tangent here. Ben McElroy, he should have the shooting mode on 2K, man, because like his form, his mechanics are perfect. And you look up, man, he shot like 34% from three. And I mean, he was supposed to be a shooter. And he was supposed to be a shooter. Yeah. So, again, to bring, to bring this back to my man, Tijon, man, like, he shot 29% from three in the under 18. He I got 34. 34? Yep. Maybe I looked at the wrong year. Uh, but he shot, he's shooting 22% from three for Chalet right now. So, um, yeah, I just, I, you know, again, we, so you talked about, I talked about, too, his handle has improved. He's a work in progress, all right? Again, I don't expect you to be Dirk Nowitzki, but right now the J looks prettier than the results, and that just is what it is right now with him. Um, I kind of question his rebounding a little bit for as athletic and as long as he is. I feel like he should be a better rebounder. Again, mm -hmm. I know they don't play the minutes that, yep. you know, the minutes don't always translate to stats, but I just feel like he should be a better rebounder yep. than what he is. But again, like, you can see as you go back and you watch, like, the further you go back of his film, you see, like, the progress that he's made. Yeah. So, like, you know, me saying he's Ben McLemore, <laughs> you know, he may not stay Ben McLemore. He might turn himself into a serve. He's talking shooter. about the shooting, the shooting. Not, not comparing no, him no, 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 to no, no, Ben McLemore. I'm just saying, like, again. Ben, somebody could aggregate this. and. No, nah, don't chop that up, man. Ben McLemore Jay look pretty, man. But, you know, unless he's playing with Harden, he's probably not making him like he should. Yeah. But, um, but that's how I feel about T. John Salon. Again, I see the upside. Again, if you told me, he seemed like a he seems like a uh, 
uh, a Thunder pick. Like it's the twenty seventh oh, yeah. pick. But they can't they can't, they can't keep do, having nah, too nah, many nah, of those. No, nah, no, nah, but I'm just saying he <laughs> they seemed, need a B team. Yeah, he seemed like a Thunder guy. We're like, okay, we see the future, we see the vision. We're going to take him at twenty five, twenty six. Mm-hmm. Let him develop out here. They, they, they. That's the team. I feel like Sam Presti has. Job security where he can say, if I like him at 15, I'm going to take him at That's 15. That's true, too. Where other GMs will be like, I like him at 15, but I might lose my job if I take him at 15. So let me trade yeah. and then make a trade and try to get him at 20. I think the Spurs are – and he, I'd say Raptors, Spurs, Heat, and – Raptors, Spurs, Heat, and Thunder are the teams that if they like they like him, you, they like you. At 15, 14, they'd be like, we're gonna take him. Yeah. So here's my thoughts on him. I like the size and the frame. They got him listed at 6'9. He could be bigger than that. Broad shoulders, and I have good mechanics on shot. <laughs> but see, I say he's a promising shooter off the catch. I say it's promising. James just said compared him to a guy that's a shooter that can't shoot. <laughs> I like the fact that he finishes with both hands around the rim. That's not something you see out of a prospect that you kind of put in the category as being raw. Impressive, bouncy athlete. Vertical lob threat. He can attack closeouts. I like that he got a little spin move to avoid okay. defenders. I saw that. He's active off the ball. as an intuitive cutter. I like the fact that if there's a smaller guy on him, he will try to post up a smaller wing. Yeah. I, like, I, I like that that dog and competitive fire. I put that he has some grit and toughness to his game. He's not afraid of contact. I think there's potential as a pull-up shooter. I see him as a guy that's athletic and big and maybe developing the wing skills, the shooting stuff is just something that he's just had to add. He probably hasn't had to do that prior to the last couple of years. Okay. So, yeah, I don't think that he's really had to like really work on his shooting because he's always been bigger and athletic and I still think that he's somewhat of of a late bloomer so I think the shooting is going to be fine that's why I have him as a I think there's promise as a pull-up shooter I put that he's efficient around the rim like whatever level I've watched him at he's been an efficient finisher he's quick off his feet at the under 18s he had 15 dunks in eight games he plays the passing lanes. He shot 65% on twos. Now, my concerns are he's still raw. I think the decision-making has a long way to go. Even when I watched him, like I said, at Basketball Out Borders, he just made some really – some I don't want to say bad decisions, but decisions to where he could be sped up. He was playing too fast, mm-hmm. and I think with more experience, um, that can be fixed. Um, I think that with his athleticism, like you said about his rebounding, I think with with his athleticism and how how he's quick off his feet, I would like to see him become a better shot blocker. Mm -hmm. Because if he is a – I think the motor is good. But if he's like a rebounder and like weak side rim protector, then you really got something there. So I like to – I just wish that he was a better shot blocker. Put that he's turnover prone, 62% at the foul line. Is what he shot. So, so okay, hold on, hold on. But that's not terrible. Sixty-two percent at the foul line, twenty-two percent from three right now. Can he feel his fingertips? <laughs> he's he's young. <laughs> he's young. I think I think mean. there's there's promise there. I think there's it looks good. There. Oh yeah, I didn't even realize it in my notes. Should be a better rebound. <laughs> yeah. So, See? I think there's promise there. Like you said, I think there's certain teams that are going to gamble on the upside. Mm-hmm. I mean. If, if I'm the Thunder, he's definitely a Thunder guy. Like, hey, we're going to sit him with Chip England, yeah. and we're going to fix that. And if there's ever a year to do it in a wide-open draft, it's this year. Yep. All right. The last prospect that we are going to talk about is someone that— Let me go first on this one. All right. I'm going to introduce Go ahead. The go player ahead. I want to talk about is Zach Perrin. He is someone that I've been watching for years— And I just watched him as like, man, this guy is good. But I never thought like NBA. I thought he's just productive. And then I watched him this summer. And then I watched him, you know, some games this season. I'm like, I think I can see it. I think there's a role for him in the NBA. Hey, man, look. Uh Uh-oh. Look. Is this this, a... Hold on. Are you either going to strongly agree or strongly disagree? (laughs) I can tell you set me up for this. Look. He's not the best 
French prospect, but he's my favorite French prospect. I knew it was. I knew it was. Look, something. he got work with both hands. Yep. He finishes with both hands well, and I'm not just talking about bangs. I'm talking like push shots, jump hooks. Yeah, he's a guy that when you watch his film, you're like, all right, I got to see him shoot a jumper to figure out which hand he is. But he he's don't shoot like, jumpers. Nah, he shot one. He banged the. He banged the three off the rip <laughs> from straight away. But, but you got to watch a lot. You got to either go like yeah. you just say, all right, I'm gonna go watch all this clip on Synergy. If you're trying to like cheat. And not necessarily like watch full games. You're gonna have to keep watching, yeah, watching, yeah, yeah. and you're all right. Okay, let me let me let me find a free throw attempt to figure out which hand he is because <laughs> hey, he's not shooting nah, jumpers. But again, not legit. Like if you don't pay attention, you don't know what hand he is. Yeah, yeah. But look, this is my favorite player from France right now. I, I'm high on Sar. Okay, we called him Aldridge. I like Aldridge, but this dude right here, mm -hmm. Ruff, he he got it. Okay. He's got it. Look, read, read your notes. Let me let me tell you. Look, we got finishing. I told you, finishes with both hands. He's got the grab and go. I love bigs that rebound and initiate breaks. I want to ask something about his rebounding. Out of all the guys that I watched this year, he's the best at grabbing a rebound at his high point. Yes. Like the ball doesn't like he goes and gets it, but he is getting the ball. Like above the rim and, on the rebound, like his timing is yeah, impeccable. And he's rebounding next to other bigs. Like that's he's he's got it. Yep. Look, the dude can pass. Yep. I'm talking again. We're not talking about like uh, he caught the ball in the post and he's pep. Like I'm talking as a role man. He's hitting guys in the corner. Quick decisions. Quick decisions. I, I saw a live ball pass. Like, he's dribbling, and he hit somebody in the corner. I know you're a fan of uh, post-up basketball. You want to see it from the guards? Look, you switch a guard on him, he's going to put him in the can, Rob. Mm -hmm. Like, he checks all those boxes. I was kind of, is he a four, power four? No, he's a straight center to me, right? Cuts. He yeah. passes. He's a dunker. Big body dude. He protects, the, he's a shot blocker. I see the motor, and I see he had. He should have the ability to defend switches in the pick and roll. Yep. Again, if you, I, I, I was, I got so caught up, man, in the film, in the moment, I didn't get to look at his free throw percentages. So I need to, I, I'm gonna have to get back to you on whether or not he has any ability to shoot. But you know, he's a center, man, I don't care. He's a rim running big, right? You think he can anchor a defense? Because I feel like in today's NBA, if you're a center, you either have to space the floor or anchor the D. I think he can do it. I think he can anchor a defense. Uh, and again, he's going to be, he's shooting like 68%. He don't miss. He, he takes good miss. shots. And, uh, yeah. He, it's, it's, to me, he's as plug and play as it gets. He might be the safest guy. For sure. You look, you pair him with any point guard, young point guard, he's going to eat. Big body dude, screen, he's going to dunk. And like I said, he can pass, man. Mm -hmm. He can pass, like, for real pass. Not like a good passer for a big man, but, like, he can pass. And, like, it's impressive, man. And like I said, I saw him. I'm like, yo, man, I, I know that this is, uh, you know, we in the, the space and pace era of the NBA. Mm -hmm. But, like, I would take Zachary. They said P in on the tape. I'm going to call him P in. Zach P. I'm gonna call. I, I like Zach P. I'm I'm high on Zach P. Yeah, I I agree. Like like I said, I've been watching him for years, and then it just finally kind of clicked with me. Like, wait a minute, I've been sleeping on him because there's some guys that have bigger draft buzz than him. He got then, it. Because there's a few guys on on the French team. There's another guy named Noah Penda, who's just productive, and you're like, you know what? I just got to go by the production. But here's, here's a question. If you're the listener, if you're a deep draft guy, and I know, like, Ethan Almanza is, like, arguably the, the greatest international junior ever as far as, like, winning three straight MVPs at the U-17s, 18s, and 19s in two summers, and he's won multiple gold medals. He is not. And I like – I mean, he – it was a guy that I was uh, kind of iffy on, but then I just saw his value when he played for the Ignite. But Zach P, I don't know if the gap between those two is as big as a lot of people make it out to be. Now, again, Almanza's resume is just ridiculous, but 
they do a lot of the same things. Now here's my notes on, on, on Zach. Good athlete with size and mobility, rebounds the ball at his high point, quick off the floor, good vertical pop, effective road man score, runs the floor in transition. At the minimum, he's your energy guy and finisher. He can attack on straight line drives. Even though he doesn't space the floor, he's comfortable putting the ball on the, on the ground and making a play there. Strong frame, broad shoulders. I like his upside as a low post scorer. Mm. I saw plays where they, they gave him the ball in the post and he knew what to do with it. Like, yeah. I hate watching bigs get the ball on the block, on a switch, and they have no idea what to do with it. Like, they don't know. They don't have the pace. Look. Like, he got to back <laughs> down, get to my spot, turn around. And you run. don't know which shoulder he's turning off. Yeah. I put that um, has a fundamental low post game of footwork. Like, he's worked on scoring on the block. Finishes it with both hands around the rim. I put he's a very promising passer. Makes quick decisions with the ball. Can make live dribble reads. Rebound and run through that dog. Our, our, our notes are the same. He gives teams extra possessions. Now, here's the crazy thing. Like, when I evaluate players, I usually have strengths and areas of concern. Yours look like mine. And usually, it's it can be 50-50. It can be... 40% strength, 60% areas of concern. When I have his notes, I wish I could show you. There's only one areas of concern. He doesn't space the doesn't floor. Doesn't space the floor and shooting upside. Other than that, I think he can defend. I think that he does a little bit of everything to where he's good enough to where you're like, this is one of the safest picks in the draft. Let's not overthink it, man. Which is, I don't care he doesn't space the floor. I don't need every big doesn't have to space the floor. Yeah. All right. We can put four guys around you to space the floor. And we can you can space the floor as a vertical threat. You can space the floor by being a rim runner, too, because mm -hmm. that's exactly what he's going to do. Uh, yeah, man, I'm not going to overthink it, man. Sign me up. Give yeah, me I, I, I like him. I like him a lot. And what do you think about him as a rim protector? I, I've seen, uh, I, I trust his motor. I, I can't so remember. So you're just saying like he doesn't have to be like in a rim protector, but he is a guy that will make multiple efforts well, on let defense. Me, let me get, a, ta let me get a, a take off real quick. Okay, rim protection isn't the, the only thing that's important for Hass big. Hassan Whiteside. Hassan, okay, again, <laughs> the all, all spring we heard they're going to attack Jokic and pick and roll. Right? And again, Jokic is Jokic. We're not saying that, you know, I, I, I'm a Piran fan, but he's not Jokic, right? But Jokic is always in correct position on defense. He's always seven feet on defense. If he needs to show, he's going to show. And rebounding is defense. And rebounding <laughs> is definitely defense, yeah. right? He's going to show. He's going to get deflections, right? He's going to just be big in space. So to me, rim protection isn't everything. It's important, but it's not everything. Yeah, I mean, you can say the Nuggets won a championship without a rim protector. The Warriors won a championship the year before without a rim protector. Yeah. So again, it's important, but it also, are you, you know, again, I, this may be not fair to, to, to young Zach right now, but again, like, I trust his motor, I trust his athletic ability. Is he going to do, the, is he going to have the, the, the discipline to be that kind of defensive anchor? Well, that just, you know, we have to wait and see. But again, the athleticism, the motor, uh, you know, it, I don't see how he can't be a good defender. I might have to label you president of the Zach P. Hey, man, fan club. look, man, look. You, you, you stole me. <laughs> you stole, I mean, I was high on him, but, and our notes are the same. He but jumps off the screen, Ra. He, he definitely does. He's a guy that when you watch, you're like, you, you know he's out there. And that was my concern about Risa Share, because he fits the mold that every mm -hmm. team is looking for a wing. But I can't say that I've watched his film and be like, this pops out. And I did the first time I saw him play, but it was in a situation where they were blowing a team out. But Zach P, I think you're going to get consistent effort. And the, I just, the way he finishes around the rim... It's, it's quick off his feet. It's like it's weird. It's, it's quick off his feet. He finishes with dunks. He's not like exploding and, and just playing way above the rim, but it's fast. Like, if he catches the ball, offensive rebound, he's going right up, and it's just like an effortless dunk. And to me, 
if you look at like Charlotte drafted Mark Williams high, right? Mm -hmm. They didn't overthink it. He checked those boxes. You know what I'm saying? I feel like they didn't overthink it, but they played him last year. He should have. He should have been their guy from day one. They yeah. weren't going to be good. You yeah. might as well just play them from day one. Well, I mean, that's because they had Plumley there too. I mean, yeah, you're not going to be yeah, good. You're not going to be good. I mean, right? What did they get for Plumley in the trade? We don't even. I mean, right? Okay. Uh, <laughs> I feel like last year teams overthought it with Walker Kessler. Definitely. Like sometimes, man. Like you, a center, man. It's twenty. Jalen Duran. J yeah, don't overthink it, bro. Yeah. It's 2023. This is what bigs are, unless they're like special, special. Don't overthink it, bro. Did did the Thunder pass up Duran? He went 10, didn't he? No, they didn't pass him up because they took the other the other brother, right? Uh, I thought they passed. I thought they passed. I thought they took Usman Jang ahead of him. They did. They did. Mm, dang. You imagine? You imagine? Hold on, Ralph. You remember Jalen Williams, Jalen Duran, and Chet? Maybe they shouldn't have went for all that upside. Don't overthink it. That, yeah. that, you know what? That, that's a podcast episode right there. We're going to talk about some guys who can tell teams don't overthink it. He's one. All right, that wraps up part two of our thoughts on the top French prospects in the 2024 NBA draft. Once again, it's Rafael Barlow and my brother James. Next episode, we're going to ask the question. We're going to talk about, is it over for small guards? Is the NBA just off small guards? We're going to share our thoughts.